Hello everyone, welcome back to our lecture series, Emeka Udenza is on the line. Um, today we'll be talking about simple lipids and we're going to take it off from there immediately. I have a beautiful quote from a popular face in the United States, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's an American astrophysicist, cosmologist, planetary scientist. He's an author and a science communicator. Communicator. He has been the director for the uh, Heading Planetarium in New York. He's a popular face around, and particularly his strong belief in science and environment and uh, planetary bodies. You know, so he has this to say to us. He says, "There is no greater education than one that is self-driven." Near the Great Surprise, he believes so much. In education. In fact, I was in one of it. He was a keynote speaker in one of the education conferences I went. He believes in science and in educating the world. Let us immediately take it off from here. Uh, our, the learning objectives we need to look at today, this will be a short lecture. We have two learning objectives. Number one, we we'll describe the structural characteristics of fat and oil. Of course, fat and oil are otherwise called triglyceride. You can use any of those or even try a glycerol. All right. Then we'll write the key reactions for the hydrolysis, saponification, and hydrogenation reactions of triglycerides of fast and oil. So these are the two learning objectives that we need to uh, iron out in this lecture. Um, what are fats and oil or triglycerides? Of course, uh, tri every, triglycerides or fats and oil are esters that contain a fatty and alcohol portion Esters that contain the alcohol portion. The alcohol portion is derived primarily from glycerol. It must be the glycerol. A glycerol is trihydric, is a trihydric alcohol, alcohol that has trihydroxy group. In other words, you can, if you want to say the, the, the IUPAC name, it is 1, 2, 3, propentriol. Propen, propentriol. Yeah, one, two, three, propane trial. So because he has three hydroxy group, and each of those hydroxy group actually plays a role in the formation of um, triglyceride. Now the acid portion is derived from fatty acid. We already covered the fatty acid. The acid portion is derived from fatty acid. So triglyceride themselves, or triacylglycerol, like I said, you can use any name, the triglyceride, TG or the triacylglycerol are formed by esterification reaction of glycerol with three fatty acid. You know, esterification occurs is the reaction between an alcohol and a fatty acid. The OH group of the alcohol combines with the carboxylic group of the acid to form the ester bond. And in this case, since there are three hydroxy group here, you form three ester bond. That's what we call triester. So that's why you have the name triacyl or triglyceride. So natural triglyceride are a mix of different molecules of triglyceride, a different mix of different triglyceride molecules. What it means is that some of these other acids can be saturated, can be less saturated, can be more saturated than others, but it's a mix. So this is a typical map of what a triglyceride looks like. Now this, uh, this is an ester bond. This is also an ester bond. This is also an ester. It has three ester bond, and that is why we use that word triester. That's like the tri. The triacyl glycerol or the triglyceride that comes from telling you that there are three ester bonds that are formed when three fatty acids are esterified on, onto this. So, so remember, I told you again, you have to esterify three fatty acid or need for it to form a triglyceride or fast and oil. Now, so look at the esterification reaction. The esterification reaction here, if you look at it, um, so this is glycerol. This is stearic acid. Stearic acid is C18. Fatty acid, if you can, this is 17 plus 1, 18. This is, now the backbone, like we said, has to be glycerol. So what happens is that three of these guys will come and react with each of these to form the triest. And if you look at it here, look, this is, so this is, let me use a different color. This is the first ester bond. This is the second ester bond. And this is the third ester bond making it a triglyceride. So this is, the name, actual name of this is glyceride. Glyceride comes from this portion. This portion, this is the glyceride side. 
glycerol tristeroid because this is steric acid and there are three of them that's why we say tristeroid and in this case this is your what an ester so this is the triglyceride tg of course the tg is an ester like we told you is a tri ester okay, let's see it is a tri ester so you can call it again a triglyceride or triacyl triacylglycerol whichever one that works for you and it is our fat and oil commonly in nutrition they use the word fats and oils this is so this is how fat and oil are actually formed now comparing fat and oil what are the what are the similarities and differences fats are actually derived from animal sources particularly from animal sources and they are solid at room temperature solid at room temperature now it is composed of fat and oil or triglycerides that contains saturated this is an important point saturated fatty acid so if you're eating a lot of fat from animal it is mainly of the saturated fatty acid and in fact because it has more saturated fatty acid the implication is that it has high melting point than the oils on the other hand the oils are actually derived from plants and seafood sources they are liquid at room temperature the liquid at room temperature and they're composed of mainly of unsaturated fatty acid they are mainly have unsaturated fatty acid in them and because they have many unsaturated fatty acid in them their melting point and boiling point is actually lower than those of the fat so they have lower melting points than do, than the fats themselves so let's now quickly talk about the reactions which is our second objective in this class the reactions um of fat and oil the first one we're going to be talking about here is hydrolysis hydrolysis is very very important so this is important in the digestion of fat and oil because this is what happens what the enzyme does by breaking the the triglycerides into glycerol constant element and fatty acid so it results in the formation of glycerol of course if you break it down this hydrolysis simply means opposite of esterification or breakdown hydrolysis of course is breakdown using water remember that breakdown using water and it is opposite this is the direct opposite of esterification reaction the direct opposite of esterification reaction now let's see what is happening there this is the triglyceride now what happens here is that an enzyme particularly the lipase enzyme with digest fat uses water to come and break this bond now as it breaking this bond it comes here breaks this bond okay let me put it this way let me make it this way now it comes to this is the ester bond it comes here breaks this ester as it breaks this ester bond what happens one of the hedge groups will come and join this thing here to form the acid this is the acid form this is the fatty acid of course steric acid is a c18 fatty acid and then remember this one now, the OH group from, remember, water is H and OH as usual, we've done this. The OH group will now come and join on this glycerol backbone to form the glycerol itself. Of course, glycerol is an alcohol, trihydric alcohol, and then, okay, let me write that alcohol. Well, I don't think I like the way it came out. Alcohol, okay. Whereas, steric acid is the fatty acid. So, this is exactly the opposite. Look at it. It is... Uh oh okay i think I have, yeah okay it is the opposite of the starification reaction simply what i did here was to turn this around to form this so that is exactly what the hydrolysis reaction is so of course like i said the process is catalyzed by enzyme and these enzymes are lipases in the digestive system so this plays an important role the way the body digests the fats and oil or the triglyceride the triglyceride now we now go to the next one the second reaction here is saponification uh we've talked about this but when we looked at um uh carboxylic acid and ester that's exactly the same thing so saponification reaction is the reaction of triglyceride with a strong base the strong base usually sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide to produce glycerol and soap glycerol and soap or you can say those soaps produced are actually the salt of fatty acid now the properties of soap depends 
on the base used. Sodium hydroxide is used to produce the hard soaps. The hard soap are usually the tablet soap. The tablet soaps are the hard soaps. Whereas potassium hydroxide is used to produce the soft soaps. The soft soaps are usually the hand soaps, the liquid soap, the hand soaps that are liquid, actually the liquid soaps. Yeah. Now, so let's look at the reaction. Now, this after, this reaction is also called alkaline hydrolysis. It's a little bit close to what happens in hydrolysis, but this time you are using a strong base, sodium hydroxide, to break it down. Sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide to break it down. So look at what is happening here. In this case, what is happening here is that this bond will be broken. When once you remove, you break this bond, this sodium hydroxide will come and join this acidic portion to form the salt. Remember, when you have this portion from the acid, and the metal from sodium hydroxide, you form this sodium permitted, or you can say carboxylic acid salt. This is a carboxylic, or you say fatty acid salt, whichever one you want to call it. So this is the soap, or you can say it is fatty acid salt, or you can say, let me just say carboxylic acid salt. Acid salt, or fatty acid salt. This is the soap that has all those soap properties. And then what happens? The OH group here will come and be connected to this carbon backbone to form the glycerol. So again, what happens here is that the reaction of triglyceride with a strong base will produce a soap and a liberating glycerol again. Now we're going to go to the last reaction here, which is hydrogenation. Now, hydrogenation reaction is actually very important in the industry, particularly in the making of margarine. If you get vegetable oils and you want to use it to make a, a solid, a, a little bit solid spray, what do you do? From fat, the triglyceride or fat you get from, from, from plant are usually liquid. So what do you do is to saturate it by addition of hydrogen or reduction. And remember, addition of hydrogen is also called reduction. Hydrogenation means addition plus hydrogen. That's usually what you're doing or reduction. And what you're doing here is just to sa saturate convert a fat that is unsaturated to more saturated one. Not, it might not be completely saturated. So let's see what I have here. Reaction that converts fatty acid double bond to single bond. What it does actually is to decrease the level or the degree, it decreases the degree of saturation, the level of saturation. It makes it, how will I put it? It makes it less, okay, let me, this often, let me just, more, it makes it more, saturated that's exactly what you're making and the implication is that the more you make it more saturated you are increasing the melting point of the fat now this reaction is actually facilitated by metal catalysts such as nickel platinum and palladium in fact this is an important industrial process in making this vegetable spread that we use for breakfast so complete hydrogenation if you're going to hydrogenate completely that means complete saturation or addition of hydrogen will result to a very hard and waxy product that is very solid whereas partial hydrogenation will result to smooth and creamy product like you see in margarine now in this process some fatty acid molecules usually they come remember we talked about fatty acid they are, the double bond usually come in the cis conformation but look at what happens here now some of the fatty acids that are in the cis conf configuration are now isomerized into the trans configuration and in fact, this is not a good process because eating fatty acid in, in, trans, in trans configuration, you know, has been implicated in heart diseases. What they do is that the consumption of this trans fatty acid raises blood cholesterol level and the increase in blood glucose level raises the risk of atherosclerosis, which is one of the most debilitating cardiovascular diseases killing people in the world today let's see the reaction what it looks like so look at the reaction here here i have a less saturated or you can say a less saturated or you can say more unsaturated let's, more unsaturated oil now remember the oils are liquid so this is liquid so what you simply do is to add hydrogen to it now this hydrogen i'm adding is going to, going to partially hydrogenate it now the i can use it then platinum or nickel as my catalyst. What it does is that I'll saturate only this point that I put red. And when you see the product, this place has been saturated. 
and what it means one hydrogen was added here another one was added there that is why here it was u1 ch here is ch2 here is ch here is ch2 and then here is still saturated so what i am simply making here is that you are making it from being less saturated to more saturated so if this is completely liquid this is going to be semi liquid semi liquid and this is how margarine is actually being made how margarine is being so margarine is actually made from getting these oils from plants and then you hydrogenate it and then it becomes semi solid like you see here and this is an important spread you use in the, eating your breakfast around the world all right and we now go to the summary of this reaction so uh, the reaction map here shows uh the summary of the reactions of triglyceride or fat and oil remember what i told you let's look at it to the left if you addition of hydrogen here will result to the formation of more saturated triglyceride that is what we call hydrogenation here if you add water molecule using an enzyme you can use your lip lipase what it simply means is that you are breaking hydro you are breaking triglyceride into glycerol and fatty acid and the, this process is called hydrolysis and then the last one here i have here towards this end is saponification reaction saponification simply means reacting triglyceride with sodium hydroxide it is an alkaline hydrolysis remember it is an alkaline breakdown of triglyceride it results to what result to glycerol and fatty acid salt this fatty acid salt is actually the soup and this is the reaction map or reaction summary of those reactions of triglyceride and lastly the last thing we're going to be talking about here today remember we said the simple fatty acids the simple acid rather the simple lipids rather the simple lipids are the triglyceride and what the waxes so the waxes is what we're going to be talking about now so waxes are esters of long chain fatty acids and long chain alcohols of course they are esters themselves but this time not just the backbone is not glycerol the backbone is a long chain alcohol and that which is now esterified to what another long chain fatty acid longer than what you see in our usual triglyceride now this occurs now we commonly see this in plant it occurs as protective covering on the skin of fruits leaves and falls and is used commercially to make cosmetics candles ointments and polishes and this is exactly i have a picture of an important one here the nomenclature is not important just for us to know it so this is a long chain uh, this side is the carboxylic acid portion this is the carboxylic carboxylic let me write that well this is the carboxylic acid portion or spot whichever way you want to put it this is the carboxylic acid or fatty acid or you can say you can say okay let me put that or you can say fatty the fatty acid no let me see let me just say fatty i already have acid there already this fatty or carboxylic acid portion whereas this side this side now is our alcohol of course this is long chain alcohol portion now what is different here the difference between waxes and triglyceride is that the alcohol portion is not glycerol it is not glycerol so the alcohol portion is not the okay is not glycerol that's the main difference so this and this this alcohol portion is only a long chain alcohol Glycerol is not a length chain alcohol. So you see, this, this is about 32 carbon atoms, really very long. And here again, you see this 16 times 2 is 16 plus 1. Okay, this is 16 times 1 is 16. 16 plus 1, uh, 17. Okay, this is 18. This is from stearic acid. But this is a long chain alcohol. So this is what we call the waxes. And like I said, the name is not known. Just understand that waxes are made from long chain fatty acid and long chain alcohols and having said that about the waxes we've come 
to the end of this lecture. Thank you once again for listening. Bye.